Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Coffee Chug, and I am here to give you just some basic structure to your first Lego League season in terms of trying to make sense of the board, your strategy, and everything else that comes with the season. It's an amazing season. It's one of my favorite things to, to do and coach and be part of because I love Lego, I love robots, I love coding, I love the research, and I love everything that First Lego League has to stand for. And so over the years, we have kind of created a model or a system that works pretty well. And this isn't going to be a video that goes into every single little tiny detail, but just kind of the framework in which we worked and used that allowed us to have a lot of success and so let's jump into this and we're going to be focusing just on the robotic side of things using the computational thinking method so one of the things that I want to do before I break it down is I want to talk about this is the process everything I do as a parent as a coach as a person as a lifelong learner myself is I follow this learning spiral created at Lifelong Kindergarten at MIT, which is Mitch Resnick. And this is something, if you don't take anything else away from the video, this is what I, I recommend you follow. And this is what it's all about, guys. Whether you're a kid listening in or a coach or a parent or a mentor or whoever, no matter what you do, this is what you should apply. It's this constant spiral where we imagine ideas and solutions and things that we think might work. We go in and, and we kind of follow right through here and we create it. We make it happen. And then we go and we play and we develop and see, well, you know, what happens? And then from there, regardless of what happens, we share. And so in First Lego League, we share with our teammates. We share with the world. This is working. This isn't working. We're asking questions. And regardless, if we have success or if we have setback, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to reflect. Why did that work? And how can we use that and apply it to our next next uh, struggle, our next challenge? And if it didn't work, why not? And how can we make it better? And we just go right back in and we imagine a new solution, a new technique, and we go through and we create it. We build it. We program it. We, we build the robots, make it do it. We play and interact. What happens? We share and we just keep going through this process. This is what learning is all about. But so how does this look? How do we actually break this down to be a little more, more manageable? Because this is still so wide open. And so one of the things that we focused on and we use as a framework, and there's lots of, of things out there, is we focused on this. We used computational thinking. And what we did was we found that the four stages of computational thinking really helped us break down the robot board and the design to make it manageable, to break it down into chunks, to make it work for us, give everybody on our team something to do, gave them a purpose, and it gave them a job and a task. And so the first thing that we would do with the board is we would do this, the first part of computational thinking, decomposition. Okay, now what does this mean? This is a big word. What we're looking down is we're breaking the problem, problem down into manageable parts. So the board is huge. There's all these challenges. There's all these different layers to the game to try to figure out how many points to score, you know, and you've only got X amount of time in order to make that happen. And you're trying to get, you know, 200, 300 plus points, whatever your, your team's goal is. So the first thing you gotta do is break it down. Don't overwhelm yourself. What are all the possible little things that can be done? What are all the tasks right away before you even start building your coding that you think your team needs to be able to accomplish? What are those jobs and, and, and goals? And you just break it down. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that here on the board here in just a minute. Once you do that, the second step that we follow, once we kind of break down the board is we start to do this. We start to do pattern recognition. And many of you probably are already doing this and not even realizing it. So we start to look at the board and go, okay, where are their patterns? Where are their trends on the board? Where are the parts where, you know, we're constantly, we have to go and pull something. We have to grab it. We have to pull, you know, is it over here and over here? What are things in which we maybe have to slam you know we have to press down on something with our with our robot some sort of contraption what's something that maybe we have to swivel around in a circle what are things that we have to rise up or bring down are there different types of trains that we have to deal with so we we make a list of patterns using very concise words you know push pull 
grab, whatever that is, and we start to break the challenges down into those categories. We're not so worried about zones, but just the patterns that we see. Once we do that, then we start to focus on what's called abstraction. And abstraction is what we're trying to do is we go through and we're identifying the principles. So we've gone through, we've broke the bar, board down in a manageable task. We then go through and we're looking for the patterns. What are we seeing that our robot's going to have to be able to do? And then we start to create principles. So what, are, what does this look like? And what are these principles that generate patterns? So then we're starting to look at here, in this case, more complex things. So if there's all these things throughout the board that maybe have some common patterns, are there things that we can do to create principles where, you know, maybe we need to figure out line follow? Or maybe we have to do, you know, start to focus on color sensors that can get us there. What are these principles that we're going to have to be able to master and solve in order to be successful? And then the last part as we go through is the algorithm. Let's see if I can even spell this here algorithm design all right so once we've got the principles we've got the patterns and trends we've got it broken down the small parts this is our step by step this is what we're this is what we do and this is what our team goes down what's our step by step guide what does step one mean what's our first mission and in that mission what do we have to do are we moving forward are we moving to the side do we have to use sensors do we have to use line follow we're going through and we're figuring that out. We're actually going to write that out step by step what we think is going to solve the problem. So take, you know, the board. I don't even know anything about the board because unfortunately I don't have a team this year. It's breaking my heart. And so I haven't seen it in person. But this is the board, for example. OK, so the very first thing that we would do is let's see if I can find a color that will show. We're going to go through. We're going to break the board down into parts. OK, not even really worried about where the patterns are. So if I'm looking at this as a coach, if I'm starting to do my own brainstorming, OK, here's a manageable part. Here's a manageable part. All right. And here, OK, I would probably break this down as a manageable part. And then as the season goes, you know, I might realize I might have to subdivide even more. But I'm going to break it down into parts. And then I'm going to go through, and then the next step is looking for patterns or trends. Okay, so I see patterns already. I see that there's a line follow line right here. I see there's another line follow patterns right here. Okay, I can see that there's another one here. And then I can start to go through it and start to group things. You know, and this is where don't take this as as work. I don't even know what these missions even mean. But I can see here that I'm going to have to press down on this one. And I'm going to have to press down on this one. And I can see that I'm going to have to push down here. And I'm going to have to push down here. And then I see that I'm going to have to grab and carry. I'm going to have to go over here. I'm going to have to grab and carry. And these are all the patterns. And then the thing is the, the principles. OK, so what's that look like? You know, if I know that I have to go through here and let me clear this this board out. OK. I start to look at what are the principles. So I know that I'm going to have to have a robot that can go here. I'm going to have to have a robot that can go here, a robot that can go here. And I'm not worried about the obstacles or barriers. I'm just driving out what are all these trends. OK. There's my point. And then I could overlap it with my circles. And now I'm starting to see in the abstract way where the lines start to blur. So you think of it like, like layering like, like clear um, sheets on top of one another. Here's all the trends of how I have to get to the locations. Put another layer sheet. Here's the trends of all the things that are pull missions. And now how can I make that work? How can I build out a strategy? Because here's what happens, guys. We get into, we see that this one's easy. And we build a robot that starts doing this one. But we haven't taken into account what it means to do this one and then go over here. And so we get halfway into our season 
and our robot doesn't work. Or we start building our robot before we've even broke down the board and realize we've built a, a body chassis that doesn't actually fit the guidelines. Guys, this is so important. If you get so excited, you build the mission, you see the board, kids are excited, everybody's just ready to start building robots, and that's where the biggest fundamental flaw of the whole entire process is. You have to stop and you have to go back and break it down. Decomposition, break the board down, Okay, look for those patterns. Abstraction. Okay, find the trends. And then you actually write out the plan. And then from there, you start to build your robot. All right, guys, this is general. This is a framework. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, feel free to reach out. No, I'm not going to give you answers. Yes, I'm hoping to actually see the board in person so I can start to see the amazing things you guys are doing. But this is what allowed us to have great success at the state level, make it to the international level, and just have a lot of fun in First Lego League. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. Some food for thought. If you have any questions, reach out comments of new ideas and strategies. We'd love to hear from you. And let's just keep this supportive of one another and wishing everyone the best of luck in First Lego League and helping kids understand robotics, coding, engineering, and more importantly, computational thinking. Take care, everybody.